Hey guys, factoring trinomials is a very big deal and this review is going to be pretty quick. I'm not going to go into all the details about factoring trinomials, but I did put a couple extra links in my description to help you if you feel like you definitely need more help with factoring trinomials, whether the A is one or it's not one, and then also how to solve those polynomial equations. Let's take a look. For these first six problems, each one of these trinomials has an A value of one which means you don't see a number in front of the x squared, which means we know it's one. And when it's one, it's very easy to factor. You just look at your trinomial and you look at the values of b and c. In the first problem, my b value is five, my c value is four. What we do for each one of these trinomials is we look at the value of c, which in this case is four, we ask ourselves, what are all the factor pairs of four? What are the ways to multiply to get four? One times four, two times two easy. Then we ask ourselves which one of those factor pairs would give me a sum of the middle term of b, 5. Is it 1 times 4? Can you get a 5 out of a 1 and a 4? Absolutely. Can you get a 5 out of a 2 times 2, a 2 and a 2? No. So what I always ask my students is what are the factor pairs of c? So in this case it would be 1 times 4, 2 times 2. And then I ask which one of those factor pairs can you get a 5 out of? Well, the answer is one and four. But then I ask the next question, what kind of one and what kind of four? And when I ask what kind, I'm really meaning positive, negative, a mix of both. And in this case, what kind of one and four would add up to get a positive five? They would both be positive. So in factored form, this is going to look like x plus one in one binomial times the other binomial of x plus four. Now, it does not matter what order I write them in. x plus four can go first. And then times x plus 1, it means the same thing because, again, remember, we know that multiplica multiplication is commutative. Order doesn't matter. Next one, x squared plus 8x plus 16. Factor pairs of 16. 1 times 16, 2 times 8, 4 times 4. Which one of those factor pairs can you get a positive 8 out of? It's 4 and 4. What kind of 4s will get you a positive 8? They're both positive. So x plus 4, x plus 4. Now, underneath that, I wrote something else. What does it mean to multiply something by itself? Because that's what's happening here. It means to square it. So the coolest way to write this answer, the most simplified answer, is to write x plus 4 squared. Next one, x squared minus 6x plus 8. Okay, factor pairs of 8. 1 times 8, 2 times 4. Which one of those factor pairs could you make a negative 6 out of? 1 and 8? No. 2 and 4? Yeah, totally. What kind of 2 and what kind of 4 would add up to get a negative 6? It should be a negative 2 and a negative 4. Now look at this. A negative 2 and a negative 4 will multiply to get a positive 8, and they're going to add up to get negative 6. That's what I'm looking for. The two numbers that multiply to get C that have a sum of B. X squared minus 6X minus 7. Factor pairs of 7 are easy, 1 and 7. Now look, it has to multiply to get a negative 7. The only way to multiply to get a negative number is if one of my factors is negative. So I need to figure out what kind of 1 and what kind of 7 will multiply to get a negative 7, and when I add them up, I will get a negative 6. Is it negative 1 and positive 7? No, because a negative 1 and a positive 7 would add up to a positive 6. What about a positive 1 and a negative 7? That's the correct answer. A positive 1 and a negative 7 will multiply to get negative 7, and they will add up to get that negative 6. Next one, x squared plus 5x plus 6. Okay, factor pairs of 6, 1 and 6, 2 and 3. Now, 1 and 6 is going to try to deceive you because you could totally make a positive 5 out of a 1 and a 6. But the only way to make that happen is if the 1 is negative. If the 1 is negative, negative 1 times positive 6 would give me a negative 6. And we don't want negative 6. We want positive 6 here for this problem. The other factor pair of 6 was 2 and 3. Well, what kind of 2 and 3 will add up to get you 5? Both positive. And if they're both positive, will they multiply to get a positive 6? Absolutely. So this answer is x plus 2, x plus 3. Next one, x squared minus 10x plus 25. Factor pairs of 25. 1 and 25, 5 and 5. Which one of those factor pairs can you get a negative 10 out of? It would be the 5 and 5. What kind of 5s will give you a negative 10 when you add them up? Both negative. And if they're both negative, they will multiply to get a positive 25. Because I'm multiplying something by itself, like I, saw, I showed you in the second problem, 
the easiest way to write this is just x minus 5 squared. Now, the next three you can see I did not show a terrible amount of work. In fact, I only put the final answer. These problems are a little bit more intensive to do. Um, and I have a separate video that I'm linking in my description so that if you need to watch when A is not one. Um, but for these video, for these problems, some people like to do trial and error. They would ask themselves, okay, what two values would multiply to get 2x squared? And if I was thinking about it, the only way to multiply to get 2x squared would be to do 2x times x. And then I can think about what are the only ways to multiply to get 3, 1 times 3. And then by a trial and error process, placing those values in, eventually you can get this factored form, 2x plus 1, x plus 3. I do an entire method called the AC method where I look for the twins. And again, that's in a, another linked video. Same thing for the next one here, 3x squared minus 13x plus 4. The only way to get 3x squared is to do 3x times x. Multiple, uh, multiple, uh, I'm sorry, factor pairs of 4 are 1 and 4, 2 and 2. And with a little trial and error to get a negative 13, uh, 3x times negative 4 is negative 12x. Negative 1 times x is negative 1x. Negative 12x, negative 1x, get me that negative 13x. Same thing for the last one. Again, this video is not going to be to teach you those skills, but it's really just to review it and I have the extra video. The last skill that I want to talk about in this lesson is solving polynomial equations. So it is a very, very big deal to solve a polynomial equation in Algebra 1. You spend a lot of time doing this. Step 1 in solving any polynomial equation is to set the equation equal to 0. I can see that in none of these equations they're set equal to 0, so that would definitely be my first step. In this first equation, I want to set this equal to 0. I would add 8 on both sides to get this equation. In my second problem, something else that we learned in Algebra 1 is that when you set an equation equal to 0, you want your leading coefficient to be nice and positive. And by that, I would look at this. I don't want to move 2x squared to the other side of the equation because then it would be a negative 2x squared. So instead, I send 7x minus 3 to the other side. And if I do that, this equation would become 2x squared minus 7x because I'd have to subtract it, and then plus 3 equals 0. The last one here, same idea. If I want to set this equal to 0, I want to have a nice positive leading coefficient, I would just simply add 18. So step 1 in any polynomial equation is to set it equal to 0. Step 2 is to factor. Okay, let's take a look at the first one here. What two numbers multiply to get 8 that add up to get 9? It's just 1 and 8, both positive. In the next one, 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. In this one for factored form, it's 2x minus 1, x minus 3. And in this next one, what I want you to notice is that you can factor out a GCF first. What goes into 3, 15, and 18? 3. If I factor out a 3, look what will happen here. In the parentheses, I will be left with x squared plus 5x plus 6, a trinomial we just factored before. This trinomial in factored form was x plus 2, x plus 3. After you do the factoring, so step 1, set the equation equal to 0, step 2, factor. Step 3 is to set each factor, each value that's in the parentheses with a variable, equal to 0 and solve. And those are your solutions. So in this first one, I would set x plus 1 equal to 0. To solve that equation, I would subtract 1, and I get x equals negative 1. The second part, set x plus 8 equal to 0, subtract 8 on both sides, and I get negative 8 is my second solution. There's two solutions for this equation. It's negative 8, negative 1. Next one, I set 2x minus 1 equal to 0. In this, I would add 1 on both sides, and then I would divide both sides by 2, giving me a first solution of 1 half. My second one, I would set x minus 3 equal to 0, add 3 on both sides, and I get my second solution of positive 3. In the last one, I'm not setting 3 equal to 0 because 3 does not equal 0. You only set the factors equal to 0 that have a variable in them. Had that said 3x on the outside, then that would be set equal to 0. If I set x plus 2 equal to 0, I get negative 2 as my first solution. And if I set x plus 3 equal to 0, I get negative 3 as my second solution. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you so much for watching.